to talk about resilience today, and I'm going to talk about resilience specifically related to the, the Head Start programme. So I'm hoping that some of you in the room have heard about Head Start. Yeah? Brilliant. Okay. So just to give a little bit of background, Head Start was established back in 2013, and it was, it was developed as a new way of working with children and young people to support them at an early stage to enable them to cope better with difficult circumstances, to build up their resilience and to prevent the onset of common emotional wellbeing disorders. Um, it was a systemic and sustainable model that we developed, so we primarily work in skills and everything that we do in skills is around looking at everything from policy to playground and supporting the skills to make changes to create that lasting change for their pupils. Um, we work at every school across Middlesbrough and from 2019 we extended into Redmond and Cleveland. And everything that we do is based upon a resilience approach. So there's lots of different um, definitions of resilience, usually to do with bouncing around like your things. Um, and there's lots of different um, thinking on resilience. Are we born with it? Is it created? And there's very mixed opinions from the leading commentators and psychotherapists, etc. Um, but the, the theory that most resonated with us um, locally was that of ordinary magic, and it's Anne Masson, you might have read about her. And Anne believed that we may be born with some resilience, it might be a bit of a genetic looking back that we are born with it. But for the majority of time, children and young people develop resilience as a product of their environments. And it wasn't anything special, it wasn't any clinical intervention, it was all about ordinary magic. So it's all about having supportive people around you, having the right environments, and that creates this magic which helps you with your resilience. And it, I just think it's great, and I would love to have turned up in a fairy costume today. I've <laughs> step too far for all sorts of reasons. Um, so, okay, so we wanted a resilience approach with Head Start, but how did we know that what we were doing was rooted in evidence and would work for our children and our young people? So the next thing we looked at was we looked at a range of evidence bases, and the one again which fit most with what we were trying to do was this one here, which is the Boyle Boyle Resilience Framework, and you may have seen this, um, it is quite well known. And it was developed by a rather wonderful person called Professor Angie Hart who is also the um, Director Chief Executive of Bond Bond. And the reason that Angie developed it was that she adopted three children from three separate families. They all had very complex needs and they all arrived in her house on the same day. And she did not know what to do to support these children. She wanted them to become resilient. She wanted to put those protective factors around them to help them thrive. But the system around mental health is very clinical. The language was confusing. She couldn't navigate the system. So she thought, if I can't do that, nobody else can either. So we need a new approach. So working with her colleagues, with families, with children, they developed this resilience framework. And she also refers to it as the box of magic portions. Magic all the way through this presentation. Um, so there's key things within the framework, I won't read them out, you can see them at the top there. And underneath them is an action that if carried out successfully, if that protective factor is put in a child's life, it will increase their resilience in that thing. Um, there is an interactive framework, the address of it is on the top, and it's absolutely fantastic because you can tap on each of those boxes and it actually gives you a range of evidence-based practices that will create resilience within that particular domain. Now, this one here is for children and young people, but you can develop them for anybody, really. It can be used for adults, it can be used for you as an individual. Um, we're currently doing a bespoke one for children who are looked after and children with a social worker in Middlesbrough, so that they can actually articulate what resilience means for them in a meaningful way. So it's a fantastic tool to be able to use. Um, so what I thought today is that it would be useful to think of it in context of you as individuals. So how you can use those key domains to promote resilience within yourself. Now in every single presentation that we've had so far today, I could fit that into that resilient framework. You know, I could think about enjoying the moment, 
connecting with others, physical activity. It all fits into that framework. So what I want you to think about now is, I'm well, well ahead of you, um, <laughs> it's ordinary magic that you put into your lives. So when you've had a really stinky, horrible day at work, everything's gone wrong, you've driven home, everyone's cut you off, you've run out of petrol, whatever, and you walk in that door, there's got to be something that you do, a bit of ordinary magic, which soothes you, which relaxes you, and puts you in the right frame of mind for the rest of the evening. So I'm going to give you mine. So mine is really, really sad. So when I go in on a night, I like to get it's really sad. A new dishcloth out of the cupboard. <laughs> this is true. A bottle of the Femora. <laughs> and I wash my kitchen worktops. Now, the rest of the house could look as if it had been burned. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. It frequently does, believe me. That doesn't matter as long as I have some flour in my workshop. And that, it's almost like washing away the day, isn't it? You know, some people might have a glass of wine or two. Some people might go for a run. I wish I was one of those people, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm a dishcloth kind of gal. <laughs> So, if we think about how we can improve our resilience using ordinary magic, just like some key tips and just things to think about. So the basic column is very much, going back to our previous presentation, is about the hierarchy of needs. So, think about it in the scope of your own personal space. So when you go home, once you wash your worktops, do you have a nice room, a nice chair, do you like a candle? Have you got somewhere where you can slough on the day? I've got terrible dry now. <laughs> have you got a good sleep routine? Do you have little customs, little habits that you do? Do you have a lavender bath? Do you have a special tea bag? Again, a glass of wine. Whatever you do, but it's really important to have that time for yourself. Even if you've got to lock yourself away from the kids, ignore the cat and everything. Really important. Belonging is a really interesting one, and I think it's one of the most important ones. It certainly is for me, and I think that's probably because I'm an only child. So I wasn't brought up in a gang. I was on my own. Bit of a princess, if I'm honest. <laughs> I tried to keep that hidden. But it's really important to have your own gang, isn't it? Have your tribe. Have people that you just click with. But do we phone them or do we text them? We text them, don't we? Well, you don't add them. You text them, but we need to really make sure that we connect with those people and remember why they are our gang. You know, what, what attracted us in the first place. And that's family as well. Um, learning, obviously learning is a massive thing, but in context of, of this, I think it's about recognising what you've used your knowledge for during the day. You know, we're absolutely fantastic people, aren't we? We, we give so much, we've got so much knowledge, we've got a lot to give. You need to recognise, you need to go home and think, right today, what did I do? You know, how did I improve somebody's experience? How did I improve a piece of work I was involved in? And just take time to recognise how clever you are. What a marvellous person. Coping. Ah, I'm allowed a bit more because you made me upset. <laughs> um, I'll give you that. It's about putting on those rose tinted sunglasses, isn't it? Thinking about, well, yeah, it was absolutely crap today, but what can I take from it? You know, how can I look on the sunny side of the street and learn from what went horribly wrong today? <laughs> and often when we work with children, we've actually got sunglasses which are rose tinted, and it's a really good prop to get them to speak, actually, and to dress up for um, And then car sales, and again, it's around recognising your personal strengths and achievements and thinking, I am wonderful. This is how I use my strengths today, and this is what I got out of it. So really important that I want you all to go home tonight and sprinkle magic at home.